Welcome back Review Engines Movie Recaps, today I am going to recap an Australian crime thriller film called, John Doe, Vigilante. Before going to the video please subscribe to our Review Engine YouTube channel for latest story review. The movie begins with Ken Rutherford, an investigative journalist, who wants to look into the underlying narrative of a mysterious killer in their community. The unknown killer's victims are always dishonest bureaucrats or corrupt monarchs. Several killings perpetrated by an unknown stranger are widely covered on television. However, since the killer's identity is still unknown, the mysterious killer is often referred to as John Doe. John Doe goes to do his thing as usual, executing any unethical official or figure, who is often shielded by defective laws. He goes to the home of a priest named Xavier Edward, who turns out to be a predator, grooming a girl named Sally in a room. John Doe storms in and orders Sally to leave, so he can immediately judge and execute Pastor Xavier. He leads Xavier into a room, where he stores images of all the victims. John Doe slams an iron crowbar into Xavier's private area, and beats him until dead. Following that, he takes all the proof of Xavier's crimes and immorality to a television network. However, after the news of the death is broadcast on television, the station clipped and manipulated all of the tapes given by John Doe, ensuring that the general public is unaware of all of Pastor Xavier's misdeeds. The news station even reports his death as the result of a horrible crime committed by someone who despises his religion. Ken, the journalist, knowing that the video from the broadcast has been edited, decides to go to the television station and get the whole video of what occurred to Pastor Xavier. The editors, however, turn down his request, and invite him to go to the police station in person, to find out what really happened. When he gets to the police station, he discovers that the police had purposefully covered up Pastor Xavier's crimes, because if the true news gets published, the public will immediately act and protest. People will be outraged, learning that the priest they have always trusted is a depraved predator. Ken then meets Sam, a reporter who had previously obtained video copies of John Doe's verdicts and murders. He learns John Doe can only rely on Sam to accept the tapes, since he dislikes crooked politicians and unscrupulous dictators. Ken requests permission from the editor-in-chief to meet Sam, but at the time, he is broadcasting live, to disclose the motive for all of John Doe's killings. He states on the show that John Doe mainly targets unscrupulous people, who always manage to elude the law. As a result, he reassures the public John Doe would not harm ordinary civilians. Following the news, John Doe continues with his objective to track down the targets, and execute them without compassion. Depending on the sins they have committed thus far, each assassination target will face a different punishment. A corrupt official who frequently misled and exploited the public would be taped up, and stabbed in the mouth with a tube. A predator on a regular basis will be punished by stabbing in the buttocks. An abuser will be punished by having their private area cut off. Since they are all highly influential criminals, who can easily avoid prosecution, they are all John Doe's victims. At night, he arrives at the home of a man who works as a youth counselor, and who had assaulted two girls, to the point where they needed to be rehabilitated in a mental institution. On this mission, John Doe decides to submit proof to social media, rather than television stations. As a result, footage of all evidence of the victim's crimes will not be cut or manipulated, so that the public is aware of John Doe's genuine motives. Many people praise his efforts after the tragedy, and a young man Murray Willis confesses, he and his members have formed the John Doe Support Club. However, Murray opposes his vigilante acts, and only supports him because of his heroism, in upholding justice for victims who have been duped by defective laws. A few days later, a woman named Kate Johnson goes to a social service agency to seek assistance, since she had been a victim of domestic violence by her husband. But she doesn't want to go to court, and instead wants to ask for money to buy medicine at the drugstore. She says that she loves her husband, and does not want to be apart from him. However, she gets beaten again in the evening, by her husband, who is under the influence of alcohol. After hitting her until she passes out, he leaves the house. But then John Doe emerges, and begins beating him, until he dies. After several months, the total number of murder cases perpetrated by John Doe increases to 18, and more individuals are aware of the murders performed by him. Many people backed him, but some condemned his vigilante actions, despite the fact that he was acting in the name of justice. A video of two young boys punching another boy at a club goes viral on social media, a few days later. 
Before the young man died, the victim of the abuse was in a coma for several days. The court, however, acquitted the two young men who committed the abuse, since the judge concluded that their acts were only self-defense. They turn out to be the sons of the nightclub owner where the beating occurred, and their father had bribed the judges, to clear his sons of charges. It is apparent that the parents of the beaten victims feel enraged, and betrayed by the system, because they had to see their child's killer go free, without retribution. A few days later, John Doe pursues one of the youngsters who was the abuser, and kills him with a cyanide patch around his neck, suffering spasms and breathing difficulties. John Doe's actions this time are extremely risky, but Ken and the police are still unable to identify him, because CCTV cameras could not capture his face. The police chief assumes John Doe is a former elite soldier, who is well versed in public security. The number of murders perpetrated by him climbs with time, as does the number of people in John Doe's support network. Murray also continues to battle against the inadequacies in the law, and the inequities that allow criminals to go free. He claims that only John Doe is capable of delivering justice, and punishing criminals who take advantage of broken laws. He is also gathering signatures on a petition, to encourage the government to impose harsher punishments on horrible criminals for the immorality they perpetrate. Unfortunately, Ministry of Law authorities reject the petition, since any petition not funded or endorsed by a government official would never be considered seriously by them. Following the rejection, some young men from a John Doe support group vow to follow in John Doe's footsteps, judging and killing offenders who avoid the law. At night, they approach a young abuser, and entice him to a location where the youth followers are planning to kill him. Following that, they begin kidnapping corrupt officials, and torturing them at a secret headquarters. The episode becomes widely publicized on television, and they assume Murray is the brains behind the John Doe support group's kidnapping. Nonetheless, he rejects it right away, because he is adamantly opposed to vigilantism. Even Sam is suspected of being a supporter of the fanatic group, because recently, he has not actively covered all of the support group's acts. Sam acknowledges he avoided covering the news of the support group on purpose, because he backed John Doe. He is tired of those who continue to obey crooked authorities and refuse to strive for justice for crime victims. Shortly, John Doe abruptly hijacks the television broadcast, and shows the execution of an elderly predator. This time, the target differs from the last one, the person apprehended is a poor man, with no legal standing. John Doe questions Adam, while beating him in the face from time to time. He says John Doe captured the wrong person, and that he is not a predator. When John Doe hears this, he takes a wooden box holding pigtails from kids who have been assaulted and murdered by Adam. Despite all of the evidence presented to Adam, he continues to deny all of the charges, and asserts he is innocent. John Doe patiently nods, and pretends to believe his explanations. Adam, who is still chained, tries to call for help, shouting loudly for others to hear and save him, but John Doe tells him no one can save him in this spot. After losing his cool, John Doe decides to remove his mask, so Adam can see his face and realize who he is. When Adam sees the man in front of him, he becomes silent, and is terrified, because he knows who John Doe is. It is discovered John Doe is the father of a daughter who had been the victim of his assault. Since Adam's horrific crime, John Doe's family had begun to fall apart, and his previously happy and harmonious family had been harmed. He states he planned to exact revenge on Adam by paralyzing him for life. However, in this country, people with disabilities are supported by the government, making Adam's life easier. As a result, he alters his intentions, and aims to kill Adam, like he has all criminals before him. But, tired of executing and condemning him, John Doe decides to give him one final chance to confess his crimes. When John Doe points a gun at his head, Adam, who's gone insane, states that he does not regret his deeds, and he really enjoyed all of his atrocities. Hearing this, John Doe becomes enraged, and shoots him dead. Following that, John Doe purposefully displays the address, before ending the broadcast, allowing the authorities to locate and arrest him. After police apprehend and interrogate him, they discover that he is a former elite soldier, who had worked in government security services. Before the trial, Ken meets him, to do an interview about all of his acts. Ken had always wondered how he knew which targets should be punished or executed. John Doe admits that he knew everything, since he worked in a social institution, and was always receiving information on victim complaints. 
Ken instantly concludes John Doe is just a killer, but he defended the victims to excuse his homicidal deeds. When he hears this, he becomes enraged, and he quickly looks at the camera, imploring the general population to begin having the courage to seek justice, so that corrupt authorities won't govern them. Following that, he pretends to end himself, prompting the police officers and Ken to intervene. However, the action was simply his plot to approach Ken, and murder him, who turns out to be another predator, who frequently molests boys. A few days later, John Doe's trial proceeds, and many media sites cover the case, because they want to know the judge's verdict on the sentence he is given. When the court speaker is about to deliver the judge's ruling, many troops backing John Doe come, and launch several explosives around the courthouse. They use helicopters to target guards and police officers in the courthouse, in order to cause a commotion that would distract all the guards. Throughout the turmoil, Sam and Murray are calm, as if they knew what was about to happen. John Doe's support crew then take advantage of the situation, to save John Doe, and transport him away. That is all the recaps. See you again in the next video. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.